So you fancy making a low budget Arthurian epic. Now you found a nice location close to your home, so no transport costs, but there's one problem. The hill has no castle. And some mountains would be nice, but with the magic of matting, that's not a problem. You want a castle? You've got a castle. You want a mountain? You've got a mountain. Ninja. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about matting. Now, if you don't know what matting is, it's a way of putting um, features or backgrounds into a film artificially. Now, in the old days, this was done by painting those features or backgrounds onto a sheet of glass that was carefully made to blend with the real background, and then the film would be shot through that sheet of glass so that the features and or backgrounds would appear to be part of the natural environment, which, of course, it wasn't. These days, of course, you don't need artistic skills or big panes of glass to film through because it can all be done through the magic of digital technology. And if you'd like to know how to do it for yourself, well, here it comes. Now, the first thing you need is the clip you intend to mat. When filming this clip, it's vital that the camera doesn't move at all. So place your camera on a tripod and lock it off. Now, you will need to leave space for whatever it is you intend to mat in. In this case, a castle and a mountain. All movement in the clip, in this case me walking about, needs to be confined to the non-matted area. Otherwise, we might accidentally walk behind the mat and give the game away. Now, for my castle and mountain, I did a Google search for copyright-free images, and I came up with this picture of Lou's castle, and this picture of Mount Snowden, and they should do nicely. Right Righto, let's open up Sony Vegas Pro. Now, this particular one is version 10, but this technique should work in all the Pro versions. So here we are, and there is the clip. Now, you can also see the picture of the castle and the mountain as well. I won't be matting them directly onto the clip, because it's very fiddly and difficult to get a convincing blend. Instead, I'm going to use a slightly different method that will produce a much more convincing effect, and also make the mat itself much easier to do. The first thing to do is just place the cursor in the middle of the clip, so that the image shows on the preview screen. Now we click on the floppy disk icon, to grab an image of the clip, and save it to the desktop as a JPEG picture. I'll name this one Background. And there it is in the media list. And now we need to come out of Sony Vegas and open the saved image in your favourites photo editor. Now I'm using PaintShop Pro, but any other photo editor would do just as well. So here's the background image in the photo editor, and as you can see, I've also dragged in my castle picture as well. So, just select the castle picture, and click Copy. Now, select your background clip, and paste the castle picture on top of it as a new layer. Ah, now as we can see, the castle picture is much, much bigger than the background clip, and it's completely covered it. So, I'm going to have to find the corner of the picture, and drag it in to resize it to the right scale for the mat. That's better. Now, in order to help me place the castle accurately, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the layer until I can see through it. This makes it much easier to accurately scale and place the image. And there you go. When you are happy with the placing, select the Erase tool, and carefully remove the background to produce a nice, convincing image. The beauty of using a layer is that all adjustments will affect only the layer, and leave the background image unaffected. Now, once you have erased your way to a pleasing composition, it's time to match the colour intensity of the two images. I did this by tweaking the hue, saturation, lightness parameters until they were as close as I could get them to the background image. That looks about right. The castle, however, is noticeably sharper than the background, so I'm also going to add a touch of blur to make an even better blend with the background. And that looks fine. So, choose Save As, and save it as a JPEG, which will merge the two layers into one image, and then replace the original. Okay, so it's time to open up Sony Vegas Pro again. 
Now as you can see the original background image has been replaced with the one we altered. So now we can at last get down to the actual masking. So just bring the altered image down to the timeline and I'll just make it a wee bit larger like this. Now click on the pan crop tool here and it opens up like this. To mask your clip just click on the mask box here then make sure that the cursor is at the beginning of the clip like this. You will see another track above the mask track. This is the keyframe track which has nothing to do with masking. The only track we need to concern ourselves with is the masking track which is the bottom one. So click on the first frame marker on the masking track and we'll create a mask. We are going to follow natural lines in the image. Now this will make it harder to detect the join between the mask and the video. So begin by selecting the anchor creation tool here. Then beginning outside the frame click the shape of the mask with your mouse like this from point to point. And then make your final click back on the first point which closes the loop and creates the mask like this. Now the shaded bit here is effectively a hole that has been cut in the image through which you will see anything that is placed beneath it on the timeline. If you now look at the preview the hole is quite evident. Which side of the mask the hole is on is controlled by the mode here. At the moment it is positive. If we switch it to negative mode the hole as you see has switched sides but we need to see the castle. So I'll just switch it back to the positive mode again. Now the edge of the mask will produce a hard edge. But if you need a softer edge to make a better blend then you can do it by feathering it here. You can choose to feather in from the edge, out from the edge or even both ways together. And the amount of feathering is controlled here. Now I'll just use 1% which should be good enough for now. So let's drag our video clip down and place it on a video track that's lower than the masking track. If we now push our clip underneath the mask we shall see it appear through the hole in the mask. And there it is. To time the appearance of the castle in the clip I made I simply positioned the mask to start after the cue like this. You want a castle? And to make the mountain appear I just used my photo editor to create a background image that contained both the castle and the mountain instead of just the mountain. And then I masked and queued it up in the same way as the first one. And when you run the finished edit together this is what you get. But with the magic of matting that's not a problem. You want a castle? You've got a castle. You want a mountain? You've got a mountain. So there you go, that's how you do it, the magic of digital matting. Well, that's all from me from this episode. So right now I think I'll mat myself a digital pub, go inside and have a nice cool digital pint. Worth a try. Until then, I'll see you here next time on the Media Channel. Ja. These days of course you don't need artistic skill and you don't need panes of glass because we can do it through the magic of digital digitary thing.